Hello there! My name is Nate, and welcome to yet another exciting video here in the Philippines. This time, we're off the main island of Luzon, focusing instead on an incredible off-the-beaten-path destination that is several hundred kilometers to the south. This is Sikihor Island, a truly idyllic tropical getaway that offers a wide array of activities, sightseeing opportunities, and nature adventures. For the past year, I've had the privilege to live here and explore many remarkable parts of this mystical Pacific paradise, both above and below the water surface. Today, I'll take you with me for a comprehensive tour of all that Sikihor has to offer, including picturesque jungle waterfalls, old Spanish churches, underground rivers, pristine beaches, coral reefs beaming with vibrant marine life, and so much more. Trust me, you don't want to miss this one-of-a-kind journey through one of the Philippines' best islands. All right, we've got lots to see, so let's get started. Come on! First off, we'll briefly get our bearings geographically and historically. Located approximately 120 kilometers south of Cebu and 30 kilometers southeast of Negros Island, the island of Sikihor sits within the central Visayas region of the Philippines. It's the nation's third smallest province at 327 square kilometers in land area, which is roughly half the size of Metro Manila. And the coastline stretches for 102 kilometers all the way around. The province's capital is also named Sikihor. Apart from being the oldest and largest municipality on the island, it serves as the primary gateway for visitors and residents. As there are no commercial flights to Sikihor's single community airport, getting onto the island requires a ferry ride from Dumaguete, Cebu, or Tagbilaran. Dumaguete on Negros Island is the closest option, with several ferry companies offering a number of trips daily to and from the port of Sikihor that normally take 50 to 90 minutes in each direction, depending on the company and type of ferry boat. For Filipinos and foreigners looking to get far away from the country's busiest metropolitan areas, I'll reiterate that the island of Sikihor is remote and relatively quite small, both in size and population. In fact, in the last 120 years, the island community has only grown by roughly 55,000 residents, putting the total population just over 103,000 residents, according to the most recent census. In terms of its history, Sikihor was first discovered by Spanish explorers in 1565, though there is evidence of prior settlement by ancient natives that dwelled in caves and primitive wooden structures constructed of malave trees, which are common on the island. Sikihor and the rest of the Philippine Islands were under Spanish rule from the 16th to the 19th century. The Spanish famously referred to the island as Isla del Fuego, or Island of Fire, due to its eerie glow at night from multitudes of fireflies. The United States took control of the Philippines in 1898 following its victory in the Spanish-American War. During World War II, the Imperial Japanese Army invaded the Philippines and occupied the island of Sikihor for several years. Filipino guerrillas on Sikihor defied Japanese rule by coordinating multiple attacks against Japanese forces until the island's liberation in 1945. A year later, the Philippines gained its independence from the United States, and in 1971, Sikihor became its own Philippine province. Today, the island of Sikihor is a historically rich and vibrant destination with an abundance of natural wonders. And it's rapidly becoming more popular for both Filipino and foreign tourists. Yet relative to the Philippines' most well-known islands for tourism, like Boracay and Siargao, Sikihor largely remains an undiscovered gem in the archipelago. Thank you. 
Now to kick off our tour, I'm standing at the highest point on the island, which is a platform at the top of a 15 meter high tower that sits at the summit of Mount Bandilaan. The peak's elevation is 628 meters above sea level. And from this viewing deck, visitors get a tremendous 360 degree view of the entire island. And indeed, the views are stunning in all directions. Started as a reforestation project in 1938, the mountain and the surrounding area gained official protection in the early 2000s as Mount Bandilaan National Park. It's a beautiful ecosystem where plenty of tropical flora and fauna can be found. The park is home to rare plants and herbs, endangered Philippine trees, and many diverse species of wildlife, including the Philippine woodpecker, Philippine turtle dove, long-tailed macaque, and over 100 different types of butterflies. There are picnic tables and benches scattered around where visitors can relax, cool off in the shade, and take in the natural surroundings. Apart from its nature sanctuary and impressive views, Mount Bandilaan is probably most well known for its healing festival, which takes place during the Holy Week every year. Over the last century, Sikihor has gained a widespread reputation for being an enchanted place of mystical practices, including healing arts, voodoo magic, sorcery, witchcraft, potion making, and incantation rituals. While largely exaggerated, overhyped, misunderstood, and not representative of everyday modern life across most of the island, there is certainly merit to Sikihor's long-term association with alternative medicine and unique healing methods. During the healing festival here at Mount Bandilaan National Park, traditional healers from nearby villages bring herbs and medicinal plants they've collected all year. They then create special mixtures and perform their rituals. In contrast, as roughly 80% of Filipinos are Roman Catholics, the festival also attracts Christian pilgrims who make their way to the mountain Stations of the Cross to commemorate Jesus' final hours leading to the crucifixion. The event is a remarkable blend of devout religious ritual and traditional faith healing. Here on the forested slopes of Mount Bandilaan, there are rare herbs and plants that are said by some to have not only healing powers, but also magical qualities. For example, the Balik Balik plant is said to be somewhat of a love potion that causes romantic attraction, while the Tawa Tawa plant is said to cause an individual to laugh without reason. Whatever the effects of these native plants might be, there is no denying the wonder and natural beauty of this protected area of land here on the island of Sikihor. On the western slope of Mount Bandilaan is an astonishing underground natural wonder. Cantabon Cave is the island's most popular cave and offers visitors a rugged spelunking journey that can take two to three hours to complete. At approximately 800 meters in length, Cantabon Cave boasts an incredible underground stream and pools of fresh water surrounded by hundreds of stalactites, stalagmites, and columns. Any visitor should be ready to bend, crawl, squeeze into narrow spaces, and get muddy and wet. This is such a cool experience. You really have to do quite a bit of crawling around in this cave. But it's worth it. Such incredible formations. The guides are telling me this one is the penguin of the cave. Just remarkable.
so refreshing. Oh yeah, the perfect shower in the cave. I recommend coming prepared to swim with a water-resistant camera or smartphone, as there will be plenty of terrific photo opportunities throughout the caverns. Tours are organized by official guides at an information booth across from the Cantabun Barangay Hall. For safety reasons, local guides are mandatory for all tours. Entrance fees and equipment rental fees are reasonably priced, which is true for most natural attractions on the island, if not free. The best time to visit any cave on the island, including Cantabon, is during the region's dry season, from December to May. More rainfall during the wet season leads to higher water levels in the caves, which can result in hazardous spelunking conditions. Fortunately, friendly barangay staff and guides offer valuable knowledge and instructions to make any cave exploration safe, fun, and memorable. to sweat out a swimming pool. Another cave on the southern side of the island opened to the public in 2018. Located in Lazi, Sam Bulawan Cave rests beneath isolated forests and fields, and it too comes with its own underground flow of fresh water. The climb down into the mouth of the cave is impressive on its own, but once inside, an entirely new world of rock formations and winding waterways emerges. There is a 200 meter long river where visitors can swim along a narrow passageway or relax in a natural pool. The water level can be waist deep or more in certain sections. It definitely makes for an unreal experience. As with Cantabon Cave, local guides and protective gear are required for all cave expeditions. Entrance fees and equipment rental fees can be settled with staff near the cave's entrance. Sambulawan Cave has three primary limestone passageways stretching over a thousand meters in total length, and guided tours can last for approximately one hour. The underground chambers contain several bat sanctuaries. The nocturnal winged creatures can often be found grouped together on the ceiling of the cave. Don't be surprised to catch a glimpse of a few cave spiders scattered around as well. It's interesting to note that during World War II, Japanese military personnel hid within this cave prior to the Philippine Islands being retaken by Philippine and American forces. Today, the water that flows through Sambulawan Cave is believed to be the source of the island's most popular waterfall, which is just minutes away. Let's check it out. And here we are at Kambugaihe Falls, a spectacular three-tiered waterfall, each one with its own pool of pristine, intensely blue spring water. In sunlight, the vibrant colors of the river water pop and provide magnificent contrast to the dark green jungle foliage all around. There are a variety of activities to enjoy along the falls, as well as multitudes of Instagram-perfect photo opportunities. The rope swings, which require a minimal fee, are my favorite way to plunge into the natural pools. And as you can see, the top tier offers quite a thrill. Floating bamboo platforms offer a chance to get right up next to the falls for portraits and group pictures. And on the upper level, you can even swim directly into a tiny cave behind the waterfall. Visitors can spend hours relaxing, swinging, swimming, and meandering between the three levels of Kambugaihe Falls. For Kambugaihe and all waterfalls on the island, it's also advisable to visit when there have been several days prior with little to no rainfall. That's because storms and downpours can lead to murky, muddy water flowing downstream for days. With the right weather and nobody else around at 7 a.m. on any given day, 
This can be one of the most tranquil and picturesque spots on the entire island. Far to the south is an eye-catching stop along the main circumferential road. This is the so-called Old Enchanted Bolete Tree, and it is believed to be at least 500 years old, as well as the largest tree of its kind on the island. Bolete refers to several types of fig trees that are commonly found throughout the Philippines. A bolete tree is also referred to as a strangler fig because it normally starts growing on a host tree and eventually strangles it to the point where the host tree dies. As you can see, bolete trees have large roots that can dramatically sprawl in all directions, often clutching to structures, overhangs, or nearby boulders. To go with the superstitious nature of Sikihor, bolete trees like this one are said by some to be the home of mysterious forest creatures of the night, such as elves and fairies. What adds to the mystical nature of this tree in particular is the natural spring that spills out from its base. The water flows into an adjacent man-made pool that functions as a fish spa, where visitors can sit down and have their feet cleaned by small fish. These pipe fish, as they are called by locals, nibble away at excess or dead skin. Ooh, that's a big one. And it's super ticklish, at least for me. Ooh. Steps away, you'll find outdoor snack and drink vendors, a shop with souvenirs, and a restaurant. As with so many spots on Sikihor Island, you'll want to bring your camera or smartphone to capture the whole experience. Lazi is one of six municipalities on the island, and apart from its adventurous side featuring vast caves and waterfalls, it's famous for a historical church and convent dating back to the Spanish colonial period. This is the San Isidro Labrador Parish Church, or simply Lazi Church. It was built by Filipino artisans in 1884, with the present bell tower being completed the following year. This active Roman Catholic church is not only impressive in terms of its scale, but also in terms of its design inside and out. Lazi Church fits within the neoclassical style and stands as one of the last remaining Baroque churches in the Philippines. The building is largely made of coral stone, which you can easily see on the exterior, as well as wooden beams and flooring. There are a number of wide public access doors, and the reinforced walls are one meter thick. Here at the front of the church, you find these two elevated pulpits on either side, as well as the original retablo above the altar. The inside is simple yet beautiful. I particularly love the light blue ceiling, which I believe is very fitting for this tropical island location. Masses are held here regularly, and the church is normally open to the public daily. In 1984, the church was declared a National Historic Landmark by the National Historic Commission of the Philippines, and in 2012, the building was named a National Cultural Treasure by the National Museum of the Philippines. In order to preserve this historic structure for generations to come, Lazi Church underwent a massive restoration in 2018. Directly across the street from the church is one of the nation's oldest convents, which underwent its own restoration project in 2017. Completed in 1891, the San Isidro Labrador Parish Convent measures 42 meters by 38 meters, making it one of the largest convents constructed during the Spanish colonial period. You can see some of the Spanish influence here with large elevated sections that are open for ventilation. This residential style, termed Baha'i Nabato, can be observed in old noble houses built throughout the country in the 19th century. As for the building materials, 
I'll once again point out the extensive use of indigenous coral stones and local hardwood. There's great warmth and antiquity to the space, and I wouldn't mind staying here for a relaxed afternoon of quiet reading. Presently, this building houses the Sikihor Heritage Museum. Here you can find church relics, photographs, and various religious artifacts. I'll quickly mention another well-known Roman Catholic church that you likely won't miss as soon as you arrive in Sikihor's capital to the north. Near the main port entrance is the Church of St. Francis of Assisi, or commonly known as Sikihor Church. The island's first parish was established here in Sikihor in 1783, and the church itself was constructed between 1795 and 1831. Once again, you'll notice the extensive use of white coral stone. The separate aging bell tower is said to have been a watchtower many years ago. While there are plenty of other churches scattered around the island, each with their own stories and identities, I'd say Sikihor Church, Lazi Church, and the Lazi Convent are all well worth a visit while traveling around Sikihor. One other historical site that you might want to check out is the Kang Isok House, which is in the municipality of Enrique Villanueva. It's not much on the outside, but it is believed to be Sikihor's oldest house. It is also referred to as Tejano House, which is named after the Spanish resident who built the structure in the mid-1800s. Given the fact that the island has seen many strong storms and typhoons over the years, it's amazing that this home built from bamboo, nipa, and molave wood has survived right here on Sikihor's northeastern shore for well over a century. To this day, the home is still owned by the Tejano family, and construction is underway to add on to the existing structure. The hope is this home will continue to stand for generations to come. Several kilometers south of the old Tejano house is one of the best beaches on the eastern side of Sikihor. Salagdong Beach encompasses two coves that are ideal for both relaxing on a white sandy shore and snorkeling above a breathtaking coral reef. Furthermore, Salagdong is likely most famous for its cliff jumping. There are two diving platforms, one at 5 meters and one at 10 meters above sea level, and the views all around are picture perfect. In fact, this destination has become so popular in recent years, largely due to eye-catching social media posts. Due to ongoing construction work in the area around Salagdong Beach, swimming and diving are not currently permitted. However, that will likely change in the coming months. Apart from the natural beauty and activities along the beach, Salagdong also features the largest man-made forest of its kind in the Philippines. In the 1950s, a local agriculturist started planting Malawi trees in this area, and later, the initiative was passed on to the Philippines Department of Natural Resources and a people's organization. Today, visitors can witness the result of decades of extensive planting and environmental nurturing as they pass through this 202 hectare forest reserve. In addition to Malave trees, which are known for their durable timber, there are thousands of rattan trees, as well as bogo and moaboy trees. Whether you're looking for outdoor fun or relaxation in the middle of breathtaking scenery, both Salagdaong Forest and Salagdaong Beach make for a great afternoon getaway while staying on Sikihor Island. Let's now turn our attention to another key feature and massive asset for tourism on the island. Sikihor is surrounded by a mesmerizing underwater world of life, color, and movement. Coral reefs stretch far distances along the coast, and in some places, these reefs are relatively easy to access in shallow areas near the shoreline. Snorkeling, diving, and freediving are all popular activities that give visitors the chance to observe firsthand the wide variety of natural treasures under the water's surface. We're now a short distance away from the northernmost tip of Sikihor, 
and this is one of the best places on the island to witness marine life up close. Covering over 14 hectares, Tulapos Marine Sanctuary offers a protected marine garden with fascinating local residents ranging from sea turtles, giant clams, and black tip reef sharks to jackfish, starfish, and schools of barracudas. The depth of the sanctuary ranges between 5 meters and 22 meters, making this one of the best spots for freediving. There is a rapidly growing community of freedivers across the Philippine Islands, and Sikihor is no exception. Visitors can take freediving courses with trained professionals in marine sanctuaries like Tulapos and learn the skills and breath-holding techniques needed to comfortably explore underwater for several minutes at a time. On the opposite side of the island in the tourist-focused municipality of San Juan, you come across Tubode Marine Sanctuary. It's been under protected status for over 30 years, and as a result, it's considered to be one of the best preserved coral reefs on Sikihor. As with Tilapos, Tubode Sanctuary and adjacent reefs offer outstanding scuba diving and snorkeling opportunities. Even though I've gone scuba diving here on several occasions, I keep coming back for more dives. And I'll tell you, it's never a disappointment. Here you can see giant sea clams, sea fans, mandarin fish, clownfish, or nemos as they are often called, parrotfish, antheas, oriental sweetlips, sea crates, and even more sea turtles, just to name a few. The water along this part of Sikihor is quite calm for most of the year, with little to no waves. Additionally, a prime portion of Tubode Marine Sanctuary that runs for approximately 300 meters along the adjacent beach is outlined by buoys, and it's completely off-limits to motorboats. On top of providing excellent underwater experiences for visitors, the reef also serves as a safe haven where marine life can thrive. It's a nursery where an abundance of fish inevitably spread outwards into neighboring reefs, thus providing a constant restock of fish for local fishermen. Tubode Marine Sanctuary sits directly in front of Coco Grove Beach Resort, which is one of the most well-known and top-rated resorts on Sikihor Island. No, this video is not sponsored, but I would like to take you through this private beachside paradise because it offers so much more than just comfortable accommodation. The property itself is absolutely massive, and beyond its 800 meters of pristine beach, the resort includes three swimming pools, three restaurants, lush outdoor garden areas, a function hall, dive center, wellness spa, game room, fitness center, and a sprawling collection of beautifully designed tropical villas, cottages, and guest rooms. Coco Grove Beach Resort has been in business since the late 1980s, and it's been improving and expanding ever since. Alongside banquets and buffet-style dinners, Guests are treated to stellar performances featuring some of the island's best musicians, singers, and dancers, including fire dancers. It's a true spectacle of art, color, and talent.
Coco Grove Beach Resort sits nestled in nature with an abundance of palm trees, flowers, and a wide variety of stunning tropical plants. I love taking time to walk along these winding pathways just to soak in the surroundings, as well as the owner's attention to detail all around the property. There are several other cocoa properties on nearby islands, one of which is Apo Island. There are regular trips to Apo from Sikihor on one of four of the resort's main boats, two of which can accommodate over 50 passengers. Apo Island has been called a jewel of the underworld because of its global recognition as a prime diving destination. Guests can make arrangements for an overnight stay at Apo Island Beach Resort, which is one of only a handful of accommodation options on the island. Back at Coco Grove, guests can schedule island sightseeing trips, yoga classes, spa treatments, or any number of water activities at the dive center. So, from my own experiences, this resort remains at the top of my list for anyone visiting Sikihor. Over the years, San Juan has become Sikihor's go-to spot on the island for tourism. It has the majority of the island's hotels, guest houses, and restaurants, and it is popular for expats that have made Sikihor their home here in the Philippines. San Juan is great for cruising along the island's picturesque west coast, grabbing some delicious coffee, relaxing at one of several white sand beaches, building up courage for cliff jumping, checking out small souvenir shops, sampling absolutely phenomenal local and international cuisine, and meeting inspiring travelers and residents alike. One of San Juan's must-see spots is right here. Peloton Beach, which is arguably the best public beach on Sikihor Island. It's been unofficially labeled as the mini Boracay of Sikihor, meaning that it is known for its powder-like white sand, clear turquoise water, and a line of tall coconut trees along the beach. The reef just beyond the shoreline is also a marine sanctuary. Visitors can paddleboard, snorkel, kayak, or simply wade into the shallow water to cool off. Over here, you'll find makeshift bars and tiny huts selling coconuts, drinks, snacks, seafood, and barbecued meat. Because Peloton Beach faces west, this is a perfect spot to have a picnic while watching the sunset with a partner, family, or friends. One thing that makes Peloton even better is the fact that it's local rather than commercial. There are no major resorts, guest houses, or restaurants taking up tons of space anywhere in the vicinity. Entry to the beach requires a small environmental fee, and it's open to everyone. Grabbing your favorite drink and finding a comfortable place on the sand with a loved one to watch the sunset will certainly be the ideal end to any day on Sikihor. Our in-depth tour of Sikihor wouldn't be complete without at least one more waterfall. And fortunately, this one is right here in San Juan, just minutes away from Coco Grove Beach Resort. Lugnasun Falls is neatly nestled into the dense jungle wilderness, and the pool below has been dammed to allow for some great jumps, either from the top of the falls or from a long rope swing near the trail above. The limestone-infused teal green water is cool and refreshing. Plus, there's plenty of shade from the overhanging trees that surround the wide cascading falls. A short walk away is a concrete aqueduct where a number of locals come to wash their clothes. There's even this circular cold swimming pool that is fed from the spring above. It's interesting to note that Lugnasan is part of a series of 12 waterfalls in the area, known collectively as the Zodiac Falls.
For those interested in hiking further upstream and around the forest, local guides are available on a donation basis. Before we wrap up, I'll quickly mention a few more experiences you might want to add to the list for a proper visit to Sikihor. The island's butterfly sanctuary is a highly recommended destination that's not far from the peak of Mount Bandilaan. It's privately owned and features a dozen butterfly species native to the Philippines. The objectives of the sanctuary are to educate, showcase the complexity and beauty of these winged insects, and ultimately increase the butterfly population on Sikihor. Next, Kapale Spring and Park is a local San Juan favorite for swimming, socializing, and picnicking. There's a giant spring-fed pool with benches and tables all around, and lively performances and town events are held here throughout the year. If you're looking for more great hikes that offer awe-inspiring views, check out the trails leading to Holy Mountain on Sikihor's east coast. The impressive 30-foot cross at the peak can be seen from miles away, and it is said that it was placed here to provide protection for the island from natural disasters and war. This entire mountainous area is great for long explorations from one vantage point to the next. Just be sure to bring plenty of water and sunscreen. When it comes to cliff jumping, there are the diving platforms at Salagdong Beach, like I mentioned, but the most extreme jump can be found at a dramatic rocky ledge on San Juan's coast. This is Batogo Cliff, and it's not for the faint of heart. Most tourists that make it here only soak up the views from the top and wait for a brave soul to plunge 40 feet into the water below. To put that height in perspective, it's seven feet higher than the highest diving platform used at the Olympic Games. At present, Pitogo Cliff is closed due to construction work along the shoreline, but it will likely reopen to visitors later this year. Finally, for the highest and wildest thrill in the region, check out Skydive Sikihor next to Sikihor's Community Airport. Here you can jump out of a plane with a certified USPA instructor from a height of over three kilometers, giving you the absolute best view of Sikihor on the way down. It's labeled as an experience of a lifetime that's both exhilarating and safe. As you can see, the island of Sikihor is filled with exciting activities, natural wonders, and immersive experiences above and below the sea. There's so much more than what we've already covered, including the island's nightlife, thoughtfully designed resorts and guest houses, diverse selection of restaurants, and plenty more beaches, waterfalls, dive sites, and nature escapes. Obviously, we don't have time for it all in one video, but I'll leave links below to some articles, blogs, and resources that will further help you plan your trip to this one-of-a-kind island in the Philippines. I do hope this overview has been interesting and useful for you. For any Sikihor residents or frequent travelers that would like to add your own recommendations of what to see and do on the island, including accommodation and restaurant recommendations, please do leave your tips and suggestions down in the comment section below. Your helpful contributions will be greatly appreciated. From the island of Sikihor here in the Philippines, I wish you and your loved ones many happy trails ahead. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.